All right, in today's video, I'm gonna talk about Agent Kit and N8N. A lot of the buzz has been like, will Agent Kit make N8N not needed? But I'm gonna actually show how they work together and how they're totally different. And at the end of this video, you're gonna see how you can use them together, when to use them together. I'm also gonna use Hostinger, they're a sponsor of this video, but I'm gonna use it to do the, I don't wanna say yet because I want to surprise that in the video, I'm gonna use it to do the demo because I am gonna have a hands-on build here where I actually build out the systems working together. By the end of the video, you're gonna have some workflows you can use on your own systems for your own customers because these are very practical solutions here and hopefully you'll get a sense of where these tools can be used in your day-to-day -day client solutions. All right? All right, first let's get a look at what I'm gonna build or show you in a moment. And so back to the original point, is it N8N or Agent Kit, or is it N8N and Agent Kit? And I think I'll give away the answer right here. It's gonna be and, and this is how, okay? So one thing Agent Kit is not, and they're not aiming to be this, is a total backend solution. It doesn't provide API integrations. It's not no code at that level. If it does, where you're then doing more with Python and, and, and other things like Node. It doesn't provide webhooks and other things I need to integrate services into. So when I go into customer meetings and I start to build things for them, I need all this. And I don't want to build it with code for so many reasons. So the bottom line is this isn't going to go away, whether it's N8N, Kestra, whatever. We're going to need a no-code tool to build those the back end, the thing that can run your mobile apps, your web, your Stripe, your visual, like whatever it is. We need that. And then when you drop, go into a company, it's like, hey, I need to connect to your files and your context and your ERPs. We'll see that AgentKit has some of those features, but I don't think it's going to scale at the level we can scale with these things. And we still need the MCPs to happen. And this is the next and most important part of my example here. So when you connect to these systems, you typically are going to wrap them in an MCP to make it so the agent can work with them. So this ERP actually would be behind an MCP. So this, these files wouldn't be like, hey, I'm talking to your files. And it could be, but you might wrap it behind an MCP. So there's a bit more business logic in kind of concise processes going on. So in this case, what I'm going to show you is the N8N backend being the MCP server on Hostinger, and it's going to be the MCP server that then, in this case, is a CRM that I use, a project management system, really, to then do things like manage the project, manage tasks, take files, make context, chat with it, all that stuff. But instead of using the normal way of using N8N's built-in chat, though I will show you that, it's chat agent. I'm going to use the agent kit and then using the MCP pattern. So we're going to see the and with the MCP server being the thing that brings them together and how that works. So first we're going to just go build out the N8N side of it and get all of that together. And then we will go look at how then agent kit will talk to it. And finally, we'll see it all in the user interface, the UI, so you can see how they work and then compare them because there is a choice you're making at the UI level. Agent Kit has a chat integration system in OpenAI is really, I think, aiming for chat to be the only UI or the main UI we consider when building things. But you got to remember when you're building internet sites, that's a different problem space than intranet sites. And so what I'm talking about most of the time is solving customer problems at that level. And uh, it's never going to go to chat, at least not for a long time. It's definitely a mix of really good UI and then letting these AI agents know how to use these systems. So we need a combination of these things. All right, so let's jump into the N8N build, which will we'll show how I build it with the with Hostinger, get it going, get the MCP going, and boom, you'll get to see how to make a simple MCP, which is great because I think it takes a while to realize, wow, this is really powerful. MCPs are really key. Let's build one. All right, let's do that. All right, so we're going to be building this MCP part of the system. And we're going to plug it in here with the chat widget. So a chat widget talks to the, not the MCP, but to the AI through API. But then that AI uses the MCP. And that's the key here because Agent Kit is going to become the AI that then is the chat widget that then uses the MCP. So you're going to see how we connect these. But I want to show you the N8N implementation first so you have a sense of how it works already and what it would really take to replace it. And I'm going to show you right here. It can't be replaced because 
this workflow right here has a lot going on that aging can't do right now. And if it could, and I don't want to say it can't 100%, if it could, it, it wouldn't be all with the no code building aspects that they show off in their video. It could be the AI agent that then uses the MCP and runs the UI, but it can't do these events. And I'll talk about those in a moment. So all these different inputs, file uploads, tasks, and other things, it just can't do. Now that AI agent has tools, and some of those tools can be easily replicated in Agent Kit. But it still needs certain things here that are like basically APIs. And so I don't, the, OpenAI just isn't going to be your API provider, therefore they're not going to be your back end. So for example, here's the RAG system as well. Could I do all of this in Agent Kit? Maybe, I don't think so. In this case, this can be talked to in many ways. And so it's not just RAG, but it's also like a API or MCP for other services. Let's see, then we have our agent, let me already went here, let me come back for a moment. These nodes here are talking to software in the UI. Those are events. So every time I create a task or update a task, every time I upload a file, they trigger events here. Okay, it's just how would you bring all this together in Agent Kit? And then this is the core of it. This is the MCP that will be what we can connect. That's the easy part. Connecting this will be the easy part. But is it enough? That's the question. I don't, I don't know. I, if the quality of it is so good that this experience is over the top and then I can plug it into other things because it has connections to other things and great. But even that's questionable because am I solving an internet problem or an intranet problem? Right? Sure, it can plug into Spotify and Zapier or something, but is that solving the internal problems a lot of customers have? And there are different zones. But here's N8N, here's the MCP, here's the web going to the MCP. And that task got done that way. So that task talked to the API, not the MCP, which then gives it to the chat system to then say, hey, go make a task with the MCP. All right, so hopefully you can see how that's working. So here you can see here, the MCP was used. It didn't go here, it was used. And if we go to the RAG, sorry, to the agent, and we look at that execution history, if we just dig down a little, that guy there is the API. That's what was being spoken to from the web UI, okay? There's other ways to do it, but that's the way I do it here. And so you can see it come in, and then you can see it go through, and then you can see that agent using that MCP, the green line there. All right, so we're gonna go build this and then plug in Agent Kit. All right, so we're gonna quickly set up our VPS for N8N and get going. And I wanna show you this. Uh, Hostinger is a sponsor, but this is what I do. This is how I can hand off these projects to clients. This is how I can not worry about certain limitations. I'm gonna show you in a moment, which have cost me time and money. Uh, but here we go. We're gonna select our VPC. Now I'm gonna choose the uh, $649 a month, but I could easily go for the four CPU at 20. And we're gonna see in a moment how that's a good deal. Two CPUs versus four means you could just do more processes at once, which is gonna be interesting too, or key as I do queuing modes and I might have more than one user. Now I build a lot of internet solutions. So yeah, I might have more than one user chatting with the system at a time. So in this example, I'm gonna go with the two. Uh, we're gonna choose the plan and just kick off the, the painless process. Now, I'm gonna show you some things here It's really important. Basically, at this point, we can do our backups and get going. Now, I want to choose Q mode. That's really key for all your builds, in my opinion. I wouldn't go without this. Once you're in Q mode, we're going to benefit from that because N8N can run more processes at once. And now we're going to click continue, uh, and then we're going to get started. Uh, so once we get going, this takes a moment, and uh, you'll see they have nice integrated docs. That pays off later, too. But let's now go look at what I was talking about earlier. I don't want to pay 20 a month and then have 2.5 thousand executions. My customers eat through that. I eat through that in a day when I make a mistake and I've lost time and money there because I can't bill a client for this being paused. At that point, I'm doing 10,000 for some customers a day or more. So it's just, it's just too hard at that level. So in this case, look at we're ready to go. We don't have to worry about that. We can max out the server and it just will slow down. They have a nice dashboard for my Docker containers. They connect them really well. 
and I'm just ready to go like that. The docs are there, the manage app is there, and then we can just get going. And that's what I wanted to really be clear about too, is that we're ready to roll in moments. Uh, and this server is mine, but I can always, because they did Docker well, I can always just update the Ubuntu version of it, the layer of it, without worrying about the Docker layer. Always make sure to set up your license. This is key. If you don't get one of these, you're going to lose out on one of the best features, debugging uh, history and, and working in that history. All right, now we're ready to roll. Let's get Aging Kit going and N8N. All right, now we're going to log in to our panel, go manage our app, and we're going to build the MCP that then we'll use in Agent Kit. I have a lot here. I showed them earlier, but now we're going to go into the MCP and start from scratch. This is how easy it really is. Those are just database connections, but those could be connections to other M8M workflows. Those could be connections to Superbase or some other internal system you have, some database or folder system or whatever, your internal OneDrive. So let's go make an MCP server that we're gonna to connect to the agent. So here we go, we're just gonna go add an MCP. Now MCPs are one of the most important things I'm starting to realize right now to really bring together the internal systems to the AI agent. So seeing how easy this is great. I should add a bearer token, add a bearer token. I'm not gonna, cause I'm gonna get rid of this right after we're done. That bearer token is key. Remember to turn this on and I'll show you how to use a bearer token in a moment. So now we go add a tool. Could add a, a software here, but we could have added a workflow. We could have added calculator, search, perplexity. We could add Manus. We could add so many things there skills we can add those here i'm just going to add packed and some tasks and i could even use the magic list maybe i let it use one but i'm not gonna and then we could do some operators but i'm not ready yet for that because i don't know if i should pass in a project id i'm not sure how to use this yet i could make multiple multiple tools to do get task get task for project create task update task so this is get task. It's almost like CRUD where we could have delete task and all that. So now we're going to set the description because I just want to be clear with the AI. It might work without this, but just to keep helping the AI. Now, this is not the AI. That took me a while to realize the MCP is not the AI. The MCP is a way for the AI to use a bunch of tools. And so in it, it has the protocol to say, hey, AI, here's all the tools you have. Here's the description. Here's how you can use them. Here's the permissions to use them. So we're gonna save that, make sure it's active, and then we're gonna use that. So here, let's go get the production URL, not the test one. Let's go use that. All right, this is Agent Kit. I logged in the platform and I go to that area and we're there. Now here I am going to create a state variable. I'll delete it in a moment, but I'm gonna come back and add another one. Basically, I need to understand more why state versus input. In this case, the state could be passed by the internal system. I might pass a user ID into there, a session ID or something so that the chat history will be threaded, like it will have history. Uh, so in this case, I'll leave user ID as an example, but again, we would fill this in from the state of the system. So I'm just gonna embed this widget. That's all it is in the end, is a widget. So I could be passing that state from the place I embed it. I'll explain that in a moment. So here's the prompt. This is what matters. This is the worst prompt ever. Take time, make this good, explain your system, explain the goals of this AI, explain all the MCP tools, even though they have their own explanations in them, it doesn't hurt to have more and have AI build this for you. But then again, don't make it so complicated that every time you change something, you have to come back here and worry about a minor detail. So here I'll just put a, a really bad prompt. We'll go with GPT-5. Again, this is a good reason why I don't wanna be stuck with open AI. This is not the best model, it's slow versus Claude Sonnet or Gemini, but we're here testing Agent Kit. But it's just a reminder, like this is not the end all answer for everybody. They have a lot of things you can connect, but when you're working internally, some of these things won't be helpful. A lot of companies don't use Dropbox, but they use Teams, so that's cool. We're gonna add our MCP here, and we're gonna say the server URL, which I have on my clipboard. So we're just gonna paste that in, and then a label, and then a description. So it could have more than one MCP. I could have one MCP dealing with a backend system that deals with scheduling. I could have another MCP dealing with a backend scheduling a system that deals with the machines, a database or inventory. Then we put the header, the authorization 
bearer space the password. Of course, I'm going to remove it, but that's so you could have done that the right way. Okay. So then we're going to connect and now we're ready to go. What's ready to go? We've created a potential widget. Oh, and I got to look at this file. Let me not use the word widget. I got to look at this widget after. We've created a chat bot and you're going to see what happens in a moment. One more thing you got to remember to do is to never require approval. You just want it to run. All right. So now in preview mode, we can go chat with this, but we are going to publish it and embed it in a system. Now, my no code system is not liking it, so I'm just going to build up a quick UI so you can see the separation. All right, so here we are in preview. Let's go embed it and then see it work outside of this so you can see the separation. That's it. Chat GPT 5 is not that fast, it's just the bottom line. Uh, but here you go. The results weren't bad, uh, speed wise. And again, prompts, prompts. How do I want to display the data? How do I want to make it friendly to the user? Now, what we're going to do is go next, we're going to go into the UI part of this. We're going to embed the chat kit into our web application. Uh, that means, and we'll see it in a moment, we're going to take the widget, put it into our front end. Our front end is going to talk to our back end. Our back end is going to share a secret, get the session ID, and then go back around. It should be pretty simple. Their docs are straightforward. I don't want the code, but I'm just going to do this for the demo. All right, let's go look at that. All right, so I went to their example starter app because I just don't want to use, it just didn't work in softer. I don't want to spend all night doing it. All right, I went to their software app and uh, I went to their example repo and I grabbed that and just installed it and followed the directions. It's just a few steps. And you get the same agent idea where you're running it and it can talk to the MCP. I mean, you can see it work. You can see it out of their website working. So I just want to make that clear. It's not, you don't have to use their platform. Is it worth it? You know, you have to figure out your situation. I mean, I have to have Python running. I have to have a OJS application running in a way that can connect to it with some private keys and secrets. So it just depends on your situation when and why you would use it this way. I think by the end of this video, I realize, you know, still happy enough with N8N or whatever active pieces. I'm still glad that I can use different models. I think Agent Kit, maybe for UI builders who are building front end, Chatbots for uh, sites that just need a simple chat, maybe. Integrations to some simple tools, maybe. Internet and complex solutions, I, I don't know. I don't think Agent Kit is threatening anything right now. I think, I think it's just an interesting idea. And if you're really into coding and doing things that way, you're, you're going to have a solution. I'm sure it'll keep progressing. But right now, at the end of all of this, I still find myself thinking, well, he had that. And I didn't need this. I had N8N or FlowWise or just my own JavaScript widget. Uh, get all the pieces and do that complex stuff. But hopefully you can see now N8N and Agent Kit. And if it's an or, it's because you're just sticking to N8N or whatever you're using. Agent Kit has some potential, but I don't think it's there yet. For me, for how I build things and the companies I'm doing work for. And I just hope you saw with Hostinger, you can get going. Get your app going, get to business, and then you can hand it off to the customer so they're ready to go with their N8N. And you're not worried about running too many executions because I've had that happen. So it's, it's hard one to beat. I'll do an in-depth queue look uh, next video or shortly. But otherwise, I hope this helped to kind of make this more clear. And feedback is great. Comments below is great. Subscribe, join, help support the channel. All right. There will be a link down below for a discount code for Hostinger. Please use it. Thank you.